Hello everybody, this is Dave from MeRC. And I know I haven't been making many videos lately, but uh, something came up. The election, yeah, that kept me busy. I've been watching that and having lots of fun trying to figure out who's going to win. Oh, I'm sorry, Democrats. Yeah, I know, Joe Biden's the president. Still, I'm wondering about that. Okay, so what came up? Well, it wasn't really that. It was remote ID final rule. So remote ID final rule came up. And I know there's probably a lot of videos out there on YouTube about this already, but I just thought I'd do a quickie for my viewers since I just love you so much. And I know you're probably wanting to hear from me because I haven't made a video for so long. Okay, so thanks for watching and thanks for supporting and thanks for subscribing. But let's get right into it here. So our comments, uh, oh, I got a cough drop in my mouth because my mouth is just dry lately. I don't know what it is, so pardon me with that cough drop. Okay, so our comments that we made to the FAA seem to have really helped because they did strip it down quite a bit and remove a lot of the annoyances we didn't like. But there are still some there that we have to consider, so I'll talk about them. Okay, first good news is we don't have to comply until September 1, 2023, so that's good. We have a little bit of time to just fly like we've been doing and enjoy the hobby. And this is actually the hobby section I'm discussing, which is section 349 of the FAA reauthorization. I'll also mention a little bit about part 107, because there's been some changes there too, I hear. Okay, no RID needed in a FRIA. Okay, so that means if you're flying at your flying field, if it's an AMA flying field, and it's registered as a FRIA, and that process hasn't been set up yet, so I don't know exactly how that's done. But if you're registered as a FRIA, you can just go ahead and fly there with no RID, just like you've always been doing. Just stay within the boundaries of your flying field. And the other thing is, FRIAs will not expire now, so that means they were talking about phasing them out, but they're not going to phase them out. Once you get one, it's good forever. You do have to uh, re-register every 20 months or some, something like that. No, every 48 months. That's right. Got confused there. It, the 20 months comes in when it actually starts. So in 20 months, we'll be able to apply for a FRIA. But after that, you'll have to re-register it every 48 months. That's what I hear. Uh, nothing I'm saying here. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say it's absolutely true. I'm just giving you what uh, I can see from the documentation and what I've heard. Okay. So, as far as free, is, that's, it's just the same old thing as your AMA rules where you have to fly line of sight. Nothing big there. And uh, shouldn't be any nuisance there. Just If you're somebody who just flies uh, fixed-wing aircraft or small... Uh, racing drones and you just do it at your racetrack, at your Freya, or you're flying overhead, just line aside. It shouldn't be any different to you. And if you're going to fly at an event, say like at Flight Fest, then Flight Fest could either, maybe it'll be a, it'll be a Freya, and if not, they can always apply for a waiver at the location they're at. Like if they're at the farm, and, you know, off-site, they could just apply for a free a waiver and go ahead and have that event, just for that event. Um, the internet connectivity thing is big. They said we will not have to be connected to the internet, which is a huge deal, and that's how the comments helped, because it's just not feasible in some places where there's no signal. And, uh, of course, they did have a caveat there. They said... You know, it won't be required at this time, and I've heard it's in there 15 times that they say at this time. So that means they could change it, especially in like three years when they have to reauthorize. They may go ahead and, and change it, but I'm hoping if they do try to make changes like that, that there'll be another comment period, but I'm not sure. Okay, so registration will be five dollars just like normal and will last three years just like it has and it'll be valid for all your aircraft however if you're using an 
RID, if you're not at a free and you're using an RID, you will need to register that as well as yourself. And you'll have to register each RID. But the good news is there's no cost to registering an RID on Drone Zone. You just go on there, register yourself, and then put in the serial numbers of all your RIDs. And you may only need a couple. You might need one for each drone, well, like this, not this one, this is 250 grams, but any propeller drone, you might need uh, one for each of those, and then you might need a couple for your aircraft. And you might could transfer one between several aircraft if they're all similar. I believe you can. I'm not really sure of the law on that, but I don't think you'll have to buy multiple RIDs, one for every aircraft, if they're all the same. You could, I mean, same weight, size, and all that. You could probably just get away with one. Okay, so FPV. Everybody, I'm wondering about FPV. Well, it looks like FPV hasn't really changed from what we're doing now. They still say it has to be line of sight. And you'll have to do it at a FRIA. Or you can put an RID on and fly, say, in a field somewhere that's not a free, but you'll have to, uh, you know, keep it line of sight, or at least you'll have to have an observer who can see it while you got the goggles on. So that hasn't really changed. It's still the same. Kind of don't like that because, you know, FPV, the idea of that is to be able to go a long distance. And, but it doesn't look like that's going to be lawful anymore. Uh, control line and free flight, uh, free flight where you just throw a glider up there or you have a motorized one that you just throw and it just goes wherever it's going to go. That's exempt. Control line is also exempt. So if you're just standing there and flying your thing in a circle on the end of some strings, control line, that is exempt. So it won't be under these regulations. Just go ahead and do it. Okay, now DIY home-built equipment, and this is for us mini-quad people, you know, a lot of us fly mini-quads as well as fixed aircraft. This is okay. You can do it. You don't require manuf manufacturer's certification, and the manufacturers won't require that if part of the aircraft has to be assembled by the user. So, like, uh, I would say if they just sell you the thing and you have to install the props, then it won't require certification. So I think that'll be okay. You will have to put an RFID on, or excuse me, an RID on the mini quad if you're going to be flying outside of Freya. So if you're at your bando, then you're going to need uh, that RID mounted on there somewhere. And it probably will be small and not too costly. That information hasn't come out yet, what they'll look like, or what frequency they'll be on. I say that you'll have a choice of a couple frequencies, hopefully, so it won't interfere with your FPV or your radio. Okay, so there won't be any subscription fees or anything like that with a UAS service provider, since we're not going to be connected to the Internet at this time. So no subscription fees there. That lowers the cost. That, again, was... The comments would probably help with that, I'm just guessing. Uh, RID modules, uh, like I said, serial number must be added to your registration, no cost. Okay, under 250 grams, that hasn't changed. If it's under 250 grams, then you're exempt from all this stuff. You can just go ahead and fly basically under your safety rules that you would normally fly from your flying club or or that the FAA provides. This doesn't mean you can take it out, fly over people and be a nuisance or fly at uh, emergency things or, or, or anything like that. You still have to stay this, keep the safety rules but you just don't need an, uh, an RID. Okay, now there's three categories in which you can fly. One is the standard category, which is just a built-in manufacturer's RID, and this will monitor or broadcast both the location of the aircraft and the pilot station or the control station. So 
that's been sort of a a problem for many people because they don't want to expose their location to the public so somebody might come over and harass you or call the police and they know right where you are anyone can look you up in your cell phone so but but this option the standard option will have that now option two is more the uh, home-built aircraft or uh, you know legacy aircraft that don't have the RID and they have uh, the ability to broadcast the RID with a retrofit module but that module will not tell anybody the location of the pilot because obviously it's just on the aircraft it doesn't know where the ground station is or the control station so if you go with option two they will not know where you're at they'll just know where the aircraft is and that's that's good for uh, you know say if I wanted to fly this thing out in my backyard I just put my RID on and I could fly my night rating out there and I can fly at night that's allowed now so you can fly at night and I think it was allowed before too but so you can still fly at night if you're a hobbyist now part 107 you can also fly at night from what I hear that's coming up so part 107 can fly at night and uh, they will be able to fly over people if they have had the proper training okay so I think that's just a test or exam or something and uh, let's see test periods oh yeah for part 107 the test periods are going to be lengthened so you don't have to take the test so often and the fees are going to be reduced and that's what I hear so we'll have to be looking for that for part 107 but I'm just doing section 349 right here okay so that was the the middle category two so that that's kind of good there if you're using the the uh, RID that you just mount on the plane then you can get away without broadcasting the control station actually there's no way to do it so now for the third category and that's the one we talked about earlier that's at your when you're at a FRIA which is the FAA recognized identification area you don't need to have an RID at all and you just need to stay within your location so that way they know where you are you're already on the map as long as you stay within the boundaries of your FRIA okay and finally it looks like toy drones are going to have a problem because if they're more than 250 grams and the manufacturer is not including the RID then basically they can't sell them so any toy drones over 250 grams are probably going to be out in the future toy drones under 250 grams will still exist and uh, there's a lot of them more of them than the heavier ones but uh, yeah it is going to change uh, the way the architecture is on toy drones and we'll have to see what happens there you'll see a reduction probably of toy drones around uh, so I think that's about it the remote ID size and cost and frequencies are not known at this time so I can't really comment on that and just to go over what's going to be broadcast on the ID it will be the unique ID latitude and longitude velocity speed thing a time marker emergency status and controller location which is the one we talked about where it knows where the pilot is so that's pretty much it if I don't know uh, there may be a lot of questions on this I guess we'll work that out in the comments and just thanks for watching I'm going to try to cut this right now because I don't want to make it any longer so thanks for watching and I'm glad to see you all again and hope you stay in the hobby and have fun even though this seems kind of daunting I think we can work with it for a while because we got you know two and a half years to fly as we are and then if, as long as they don't change too much in it we'll probably be okay for a, for a long time I know it probably makes the AMA happy because now they'll probably get lots of customers back because uh, I know they've lost some people because they just got out of the hobby but this is sounding like yeah the hobby's going to go on it's going to adapt and uh, 
AMA will go on too. And I hope uh, Flight Fest and you know continues and I hope uh, Flight Test becomes a CBO because that would be nice. All right, we'll talk to you later. This is Dave signing out.